Bowl season continues on a cold afternoon in Nashville as the 21st ranked Northwestern Wildcats search for their 10th win of the season against the 7-5 Kentucky Wildcats. You're watching the Franklin American Mortgage Music City Bowl as part of Capital One Bowl Mania. With Steven Johnson under center. One of 22 seniors playing for the Cats for the final time today. And Benny Snell in the backfield fakes it to him on an RPO to start the game. And up top to Taven Richardson, who makes the catch in bounds for the big gain into Northwestern territory down to the 41. That's 26 yards. Boy, this is excellent coverage. It's just a better throw and a catch. And a guy that's got tremendous athletic ability. Two seasons of seven wins. Nice. Wants to throw again. Escapes some pressure, throws against his body, and has Richardson inside the five. The most consistent receiver of the group this year has been Taven Richardson. And you see why, but this is a throw that not a lot of guys can make. Rolling left, back across your body in the middle of the field. Every coach in America will tell you not to make that throw. Well, Benny Snell has 31 rushing touchdowns, a record at Kentucky in only two seasons. And here he goes for number 32. The Kentucky Wildcats strike first. There you get down close to the goal line. You go to the guy, the shoulders that you rode all game long. A couple of nice blocks. It's blocked by Greg Hart tight end to, on a kick out block to open it up for Benny Snell and Kentucky on the board first here in the Music City Bowl. Bandit fired up on the sidelines is Austin McGinnis, the all-time leading scorer in Kentucky history. Smells contagious, isn't he? He is. Great attitude. He fires up his teammates, and McGinnis makes the extra point. Kentucky comes in as a nine-and-a-half-point underdog, and on the first series, plays with a chip on their shoulder, culminating with Benny Snell in the end zone. 7 nothing Kentucky in Nashville. second to none at Northwestern where he got a chance to really design it himself. Forcing the option to Jackson. A missed tackle by Kentucky and look at Jackson go in the Wildcat territory. That is Jeremy Larkin who got the carry there instead of Jackson on the, the option toss. And in the backfield, you see the missed tackle for Kentucky. Yeah, on a rare occasion in which they rest Jackson, it's Larkin who actually had a team that Northwestern may have faced all year long. Northwestern 21 of 34 on fourth down. Kentucky's had a trouble getting off the field on this down. And they can't do it here either as Thorson gets the first down. Kentucky has given up a first down 18 of 25 times. Second and 10. This is a jet sweep to Jelani Roberts who has the first down inside the 20. And if he doesn't get tracked down by Jordan Jones, he may be in the end zone and dancing and celebrating with his team. I mean, right here, nice job of securing the corner. With a nice block by Cameron Green up there with four on the year. Northwestern needs to get to the eight. Incomplete. Looking for Macon Wilson, who is tied up there with Chris Westry, fourth down. This is Charlie Kubander who's had a terrific freshman season, 12 of 14 on the year. And this will be from 33 yards. And he puts Northwestern on the board. So Jeremy Larkin with a big run to get Northwestern into position, 7-3 Kentucky. For, for uh, the two to get on the same page. Benny Snell's had a phenomenal sophomore season and on cue, dives over a man into Northwestern territory. How about the high jumping ability there? <laughs> we were talking about, you can feel Benny Snell play football. And I mean, every, he has you on the edge of your seat each and every time he touches the ball. Your team has converted to third down yet, combined 0 for 6. 
Johnson in the traffic. Dangerous pass looking for Bowden. It's fourth down. Yeah, excellent coverage by the safety. Reaching for 1,000 yards, four consecutive years. It's amazing. It's 14 more. This time, Thorson loads up to Skoranek. And Bennett makes the catch, but a flag comes in, and Northwestern thinks it's on Kentucky. Uh, and it is. It's just a, a little bit extra by Derek Beatty, the corner, where you don't have to flip a guy like that. That is what they're trying to get out of football. Here's the pitch to him. And he's 10th in college football history inside the 30-yard line. 14 yards there for Justin Jackson and trophy Justin Jackson doesn't get a lot of attention outside the Big Ten Here's Larkin throwing back to Thorson and Clayton makes the catch inside the 10-yard line But he's ripping his right knee in some pain there on what will be a first and goal. Oh boy <clears throat> Matt Ovidi is the backup who's played some this year, but Jordan Jones reads this out. It's a little late, but he's able to recover and get back to the quarterback, Clayton Thorson. I mean, you could just kind of see that that left knee or right knee actually buckle as Jordan Jones makes contact right there. Coming up in Arlington after this. So first and goal for Alvedi from the five with Justin Jackson standing next to him. And here's Jackson straight ahead to the goal line. Powers in. Touchdown, Northwestern. I just don't think that he can run between the tackles at 5'11", 200 pounds. But defenders rarely get a straight shot on Justin Jackson. And you'll see here, this is just second effort. He's engaged by Courtney Love right about the line of scrimmage. And he actually goes forward. You see there the approval of... Pat Fitzgerald. Does this man love football or not? Oh, and there's no doubt about it. All you got to do is sit in a room with him for about a minute. So much emotion from Fitz in his 12th season as the head coach of the Wildcats, searching for their eighth straight win. Commander's extra point is good, and Northwestern has its first lead. They have been outstanding in the second quarter. This season issues with his tight end since C.J. Conrad went down in the Georgia game. Lost for the season with a foot injury. He pumps and throws down the field for a first down to Charles Walker. Nice job there getting the corner to bite. And Walker just continues, slips right behind the corner between the safety right there. You get the corner to bite. Safety can't get over there in time. Benny Snell, no place to go, will lose more than a handful. Marcus McShepard comes in there, as does Joe Gaziano. And here comes a flag at the end of the play. Maybe a little bit extra on the tail end of this. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, offense number 26. Contact with an official. Number 26 is disqualified for the remainder of the game. Second down. Oh, wow. That changes everything. Benny Snell ejected from the football game for making contact with an official after the big loss on the play. You see him straddling the sideline, gets up and says, to get your hands off of me, basically, to Chris Coit, the oh, referee. Oh, come on, come on. Under pressure will run it for the first down. Past midfield and down near the 49-yard line where he's tackled by Courtney Love. That's 16 yards. Looked like maybe a face mask at the very end of that was missed, but he got deep zone drops by Kentucky. They have to get to the 39. Incomplete. Derek Beatty gets a hand in there late. And just the timing. Alvidi is a little bit late with the ball. Beatty goes in motion in Ohio. So I imagine we're going to see him along with Saheem King. 
Second and eight. Johnson, and that could be picked off. It is intercepted by Montre Hardage, who got his hands underneath the football after it bounced off a receiver. Yeah, third interception of the year for Hardage. And Steven Johnson has just kind of been off the mark a little bit behind receivers. And there you, I mean, you're getting hit. That's one that uh, those just happen off a of receiver's hands. Both guys trying to make a play. Johnson under duress. Ross kind of sliding, and gets a hand on it, and just bad luck. And he slips and falls, gets that hand on it, and as you see at the end of the play, Hartage did a great job of getting those hands underneath the football for his eighth career interception. Alvidi loads up as a wide open receiver. That is Charlie Fessler. You have got to get off the hash mark if you're a safety and they're trying to rotate coverage. Kentucky needs to get to the 14 with five on the play clock. Make that Northwestern to the 14 yard line. This is Jackson on a third and six and he has passed that and near the goal line. First and goal for the terrific tailback for the Northwestern Wildcats. Yeah, this is a special player that not a lot of people in the country have had a chance to see four consecutive 1,000-yard seasons, and you see why. The ability to make people miss, he is tough between the tackles, and can catch the ball out of the backfield. 43 receptions on the year. 40 career rushing touchdowns, and now a first and goal. There's number 41. airborne here his job in the middle they pull JB Butler around and really don't even need the block it's the athletic ability of Justin Jackson to will himself into the end zone third in Big Ten history in career rushing yards went to number 10 in college football history today in the second quarter Archie Griffin won two Eisman trophies Ron Dane won one those are the two guys in front of him in Big Ten history Bender gets the extra point up, and Northwestern's lead is double digit suddenly with 17 unanswered points. Montre Hardage with the interception off the bounce. And then Justin Jackson finishes it all. Northwestern on top. There is Juice Johnson. He's been quiet, but there he is and he's near the 30-yard line. Andre Ware on cue with Eddie Grand and Steven Johnson. Well, the guy has been so effective throughout the year on third downs that if I'm Steven Johnson and I'm struggling, I'm going to find a guy that I can rely on. And it's number nine, Juice Johnson, right on cue. Our job's a lot, a lot easier from week to week when we get a chance to cover Kentucky. He's had to overcome a lot of adversity this year with Kentucky's offense. Here's a third and five for Johnson, who shuffles his feet. Gets rid of it at the last minute, dumping it off in front of Ross. Joe Gaziano on that Kentucky sideline over there, applying all the pressure. Has been steady in relief of Thorson. And he throws the first down pass on a third and seven to Jace James for 11 yards. It's been proven now to Matt House that if you give Matt Alvidi time, he can beat you with his arm. And he can go through his progressions and his reads. And that's a nice job. He did it on a third and seven a couple of plays ago. This is a third and eight. Here comes the pressure. Jordan Jones can't get to him. Alvidi escapes, and he gets about six. It'll be fourth down. And it's enough for Pat Fitzgerald will go for it here. Not going to trot the kicker on the field here. He told us when uh, we get he gets past the 50-yard line, 
He's not afraid to go for it. 62% on the year in converting on fourth down. And to your point, Charlie Kubander's long on the season is just 40 yards, so they're not really in his range yet. They have to get to the 24-yard line. They're one for two on fourth down today. It's their 37th attempt this season. Alvidi escapes the pressure, dumps it off underneath, incomplete. They say Flynn Nagel trapped it with the grass. And Alvidi took a shot. Josh Pascal arrived just a little bit as the ball, right before the ball was released. 8 of 16, 123 yards, and of course the tipped interception. Sahim King in relief of Benny Snell gets the edge, breaks tackles, stays on his feet and is out of bounds near the 45-yard line. That's 12 yards. It could have been a loss of five. Consistent receivers, how Eddie Grant described it. Play action. Johnson, deep ball. And K1 Ross, at least initially, is given a catch inside the 20-yard line. Well, you hurry up, press the gas, and go ahead and get this thing snapped. There's the look, it's underthrown a little bit. A1 Ross, that's a grab. Incredible. Well, well, it, it, it aren't. It's now second and eight in the red zone. Johnson near the end zone. Up the ladder goes Richardson. First and goal. Well, this young man is having some coming out party. Whoever the quarterback turns out, turns out to be next year, next spring, maybe next fall going into the season. He has got one heck of a receiver and a weapon in Taven Richardson. Five catches for 89 yards. And how about the guts of Steven Johnson after missing the last couple of drives due to injuries? I'd go there again. Nice matchup in the corner here. Instead, Steven will keep it himself. Touchdown, Kentucky. And the defense able to get themselves off the field and then the offense comes back to life with Steven Johnson back in the game leading the way this little uh, read option decides to keep it he walks in the corner to get uh, the Kentucky Wildcats right back in this game you think this fires Big Blue Nation up oh, when your no, team no leader doubt. goes to the locker room after an injury and comes out on the field and marches down on the first drive of the third quarter. No doubt about it. Showing you some toughness. Kentucky with their second touchdown of the day. Down three in Nashville thanks to their team leader in his final game for Big Blue. Against Penn State, he's four of eight for 50 yards and has run it for 29. This time it's Jackson over 100 already, and it's another first down run inside the 40. Cuts off the block of Tommy Doles. And just kind of sets things up. He is a patient runner. We talked about that earlier in third and five. Seven for 45 yards. He got 16 there, and he gives way to Larkin. They lose the first tackle, and the extra effort Gets him about a couple yards away from the first down. So it should be about fourth and two here, but a late flag has come in. Sure, a little extra curricular going on on the sideline here. We had, we mentioned the three personal fouls that Jordan Jones had against Louisville. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct. Defense number 34, his first of the game. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. They will officially say this is a 43-yard try, and again, this will be the longest of the freshman's career. And he misses it wide right. So after a 10-play drive for Northwestern, it ends with no points. Kentucky gets off the football field after Kubander's miss. UK down three. Are the procedures they have to go through. Let him keep his focus on school and football. But Coach Fitzgerald is just so impressed with how he's handled it.
What a catch that is made there by Juice Johnson. Haven't seen a lot of him today, but two big catches for the man playing in his last game. Needing a conversion here. Johnson under pressure, escapes on the run in front of Juice Johnson. He can't make the catch. Spelling Justin Jackson standing next to Matt Alvidi in the backfield. And Larkin, who might be the man next year, says, how about this year? Into the clear. Inside the 10. Mike Edwards prevents the touchdown as Larkin goes wild. Came in, fresh set of legs, and explosive plays once again haunting the Kentucky Wildcats, this time in the form of a run by Jeremy Larkin, the red shirt freshman from Cincinnati, Ohio. Larkin stopped near the two. Darius West for safety coming up again. And it's fourth down. You gotta be elusive to make it Mike Edwards miss. Doesn't miss much, but Larkin in the hole is able to escape the mitts of Mike Edwards. Chip shot field goal, or do you go for it if you're Northwestern on a fourth and one to try to put the game away? Well, Pat, Pat Fitzgerald told us that he is not shy about going for it on fourth down. So he is going to roll the dice here. I'm okay with it. You got a lead. You believe in your offensive line. We mentioned it since the Penn State game. They have been playing some pretty, pretty stout football up front. Need to get to the one for a first down. Fourth and one. Jackson next to Alvidi. And it's a reverse. And Lees is under all kinds of pressure wanting to throw the ball to the end zone. Up for grabs. Incomplete. They try a trick play on fourth and one. And Kentucky gets off the field again. Now, if you ask me about the play call, <laughs> that's a little bit different. And uh, I'm... I'm going to line Justin Jackson up and run the football downhill behind Blake Hans, J.B. Butler, Brad North, and Tommy Doles and Rashawn Slater. They try the trick play with Lees. Kentucky says, no, sir. UK gets the ball back. I am just an icon living. living. I In Kentucky operating. Standing in his own end zone. This is just the 16th play on offense. They've had this half and K1 Ross Gives them better field position on a nice strike from Johnson like the explosiveness We're pushing the gas a little bit offensively for Kentucky on the catch from the senior from Westchester, Ohio Johnson facing pressure from Gaziano and he's picked off Straddling the sideline is Kyle Cairo. Touchdown, Northwestern. Well, Graziano can just take over a game. Now, he didn't get there, but he certainly affected the placement because it rushed Steven Johnson. We had to take a look and see if so far so good that is a Houdini act by the senior from New Jersey Kyle Cairo with his eighth career interception I think that's gonna stand and pick six unbelievable the concentration here I saw Clayton Thorson celebrating in that chair on the sideline after that gruesome leg injury he sustained in the first half. Kubander to make it a 10-point game. Joe Casiano has been in the backfield all day. And as you said, Andre, the pressure that he gave Steven Johnson created this interception. Yeah, it just forced the throw a little bit where you can't really step into it and get everything on it. But I think uh, Cal Cairo had such a break on it. I'm not sure that, you know, regardless of a clean pocket or not, going there was not the right place 
in which to throw the football. Pat Ryan, the billionaire insurance man, has had such a huge imprint on his alma mater as King takes it past the 50-yard line right at the chains and you know, the little pushing and shoving at the end of the play. Kentucky has to get to the Northwestern 39. King on the underneath throw gets to the 41. It'll be fourth and two from there. I think this is a, a position on the field in which Mark Stoops is going to have to roll the dice here. It's about six and a half minutes left in the ball game. And where's Juice Johnson when you need him? Big fourth down here if they decide to throw the football, which I think they will without Benny Snell in the backfield. But Juice is actually on the sideline in this situation. Here's K1 Ross where he's gone at other times. On the fourth down throw, it's caught. Nice catch made by Charles Walker to move the chains. Excellent throw, excellent catch, and the timing was perfect. Last game in a Kentucky uniform. Team, no place to go. Stopped in the backfield back at the 30-yard line. Lancaster and company making the tackle, and here comes McGinnis to try to make it a seven-point game. And his range, about 50 to 55 yards. One of the best doing it. Austin McGinnis. He has 71 career field goals. This a 48-yard attempt to break his season mark that he set last year. Automatic. 21 field goals last year, 22 as a senior. Needed a field goal, at least three points in that drive. Kentucky able to put one on the board and draw with within seven points of Northwestern. You saw what was at stake there for both of these teams. Justin Jackson running in the final minutes of his incredible collegiate career. Man, it just looks like at times he is going to get blown up. And then he gives it and takes it away. I mean, the shiftiness right here. Pascal, you thought... Pascal, you thought had him, and another defender for Kentucky, you thought had him bottled up. 2.42 to go, and a big third and four for Northwestern. They're three of seven in this half. They give it to Jackson again, and the extra effort is just short of the first down. It's fourth down. And I got to believe here, Pat Fitzgerald will send the punter out and punt this baby away. Going for it on their own 39-yard line on a fourth and one. Alvidi on the sneak. It'll depend on the spot. I don't think so, Taylor. What a gamble by Pat Fitzgerald. Well beyond his 50 yard, the 50 yard line, and I think well, Courtney Love came out of the pile with the football. Yeah, they can't even find the ball because Courtney Love has it running towards the Kentucky bench. But that mark, it's always the forward foot of the official looks to be short. I think it's going to be Kentucky's ball. Three to two, a, a timeout. And 2.31 on the clock. Man, what an aggressive call by Fitzgerald there. On fourth and at least a yard, and Alvini lowers his head, had to get past the 40-yard line, but you see those side judges coming in shy of the mark. Actually looks like the correct spot. Hard to tell. A short. A couple of links short. Northwestern now one of five on fourth down today. Kentucky gets the football with 2.31 left. With 2.31 to go and one timeout. Johnson 
middle of the field, and it's Rigg who somehow got between defenders for a first down. Rigg his second catch tonight. He had one on the season coming in. And he's a young tight end, just a sophomore, who's just continue to get better and how about the confidence that Steven Johnson has in Justin Rigg to go to him on a couple of occasions tonight 16 yards inside the 25 near the 23 Johnson runs past the 20 and stays on his feet near the 17 yard line where he's tackled by Nathan Fox two plays to get past the 13 Johnson Middle of the field, incomplete. Here comes the flag if yeah. the rev back judge can find it. And so he's got so many layers on with the weather and the cold <laughs> down there, he couldn't find the flag. Well, this is going to be a pass interference and an automatic first down for Kentucky. Kentucky just inside the 10. We'll cover zero and all out blitz coming right now. Johnson on a design quarterback keeper has daylight. And he lowers the shoulder. Touchdown. Steven Johnson throws a pick six to Kyle Cairo and comes back with 10 unanswered points. Kentucky down one. And as you said, with 37 seconds left, at least initially, their offense is staying on the field going for two. Going for the win with 37 seconds left. Now this is six foot six out here. Here's Johnson there in motion. Johnson will throw. In zone. Taven Richardson can't make the catch. Marcus McShepard there in coverage. Northwestern takes over. Once again, having to throw under duress forces or speeds up things when you can get pass rush, and they did it there with just four rushers. Set, all of a sudden, it's not clean. It doesn't, the time's there, not, he doesn't have ideal time. That one just sails on him just a little bit. Fits his reaction here, and he knows he needs his team to recover an onside kick that Mark Stoops' team will now have to attempt after he made the bold decision of going for the win. The game has had so many twists and turns, and here is Austin McGinnis with the onside kick attempt to try to give Kentucky the football back. Instead, he angles it past the Wildcats, and it's covered up easily down at the 25-yard line by Montre Hardage. And Northwestern is going to win back-to-back -back bowl games for the first time in school history. For Northwestern 24, Kentucky 23. Coming up next, it's the H&R Block College football pregame. So long from Nashville. Let's send it back to the studio.